Everybody has big hopes and dreams, but most people will never be successful. So what's going on, guys? It's Uzziah, your success strategist. And today I want to give you the reality of why most people will never be successful. That's the sad truth. And I hate that that wasn't the case. But the sheer reality is most people will never become successful. It's really only 5% of people in the world that are living the life that they want to live. 95% of people in the world today are very far from their definition of a successful life that they will want to have. And you got to ask yourself the question, why is that? Today's episode, I'm going to give you the top three reasons. So I want you to subscribe as always, and let's go ahead and tune in. Now, I know there's a ton of different reasons that you could make up as to why you're not successful. You might say, oh, well, it's because of the man. You might say, oh, well, I came up from this certain background or I had this problem in the economy. You could try to pick at all of these different straws to justify where you're not where you want to be. But I can assure you that there's somebody in the world today that came up harder than you, that went through more difficult circumstances, dealt with harder obstacles, and guess what? They're doing it, and you really don't have any excuse. And from a productivity perspective, which is where today's video comes from, I want to give you the three productivity lacking reasons why people don't become successful. The first reason is most people will never become successful because their lives are too cluttered. You look at their lives and they're trying to do a billion different things at once. You know, it's so funny. I always work with these different clients throughout the year and I speak with people even outside of my clientele. They'll stop me in the street. They'll send me, you know, Instagram messages. They'll send me emails and they'll ask me, hey, how do I become successful, Uzziah? How do I do a better job managing my schedule? And I always tell them one thing. You got to start decluttering your life. Declutter your life. Do you understand what spring cleaning is all about? Spring cleaning is about getting rid of all of the junk that you've been accumulating throughout the year in your household. Now, when it comes to all of those pieces of clothing that's all over that you never use, all the stuff in the garage and the attic that you're holding on to, that you're hoarding around that needs to be thrown away, it makes sense for you to declutter then, right? But think about how much you've accumulated in your day-to-day -day life. See, you might have accumulated a million different ideas. And what you do is, every day of the week, you try your hand a little bit at one idea, and then another idea, and another one. Not enough at any one idea that it actually takes off and goes somewhere. You dip and dab right here and there on all these different concepts, and you're tossed to and fro with all these different distractions that it begins to start hoarding all of these different commitments and, you know, responsibilities and just distractions and noise in your life to the point where you're walking in your house and you can't see anything because it's loaded with clothes and trash all over the place. That's how it is when it comes to your day-to-day -day life. But when I tell people, ironically enough, productivity is not about doing everything Productivity is about doing the right thing. So you have to clear off 80% of your schedule to even be able to make time for the right thing. You know the first thing that people say? Oh, but Uzziah, this. Oh, but Uzziah, that. Everybody's got an excuse as to why they've got to do a billion different things at once. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. So much of your work is just busy work to keep you preoccupied. You're just spending half the day, if not half your life, following after somebody else's agenda. 
And the things that you hold to your life that you feel are so important and so dire, not only is it suffocating the real success that's waiting for you, if you made time for the real success, you fail to understand that if you stopped focusing on the minutia of things that's not even important, most people wouldn't even be able to tell the difference. See, it's very easy for you to have a boss that just assigns to you busy work. It's very easy for you to come up with little petty tasks to keep yourself feeling busy. See, on some level, it feels good to feel like you're busy doing something. And we always know how to be able to find other extra things to do. Whenever we've got that one big project right in front of us, that's super hard, super important, super tiring project that we don't want to deal with in our heart of hearts. But we find other things to do to make busy work, <laughs> to stop from working on that task. Have you ever found yourself in the midst of doing that? Have you ever gone into a day knowing that you had something super important to do, but you just started making other things to do out of nowhere to start putting the important on the back burner? All of that is considered clutter. If you want your life to truly be successful in whatever definition that you have of the word, you have to get rid of all of the unimportant things and you got to make room for the most important thing. Let me tell you about this in my personal life. I, just like anybody else, have gone through a life of massive clutter. You know, I spent my whole life working to get up to a position where I could be at a nine to five job, working for a computer company. I went to school, I made the grades, I did everything that I was supposed to do to finally make my way into corporate America. And so I'm in corporate America and I'm working hard, I'm enjoying it. I'm finally feeling the benefits of all of the years of effort to get me to that point. And I felt like that was good. But there came a point in time in my life where I said to myself, you know what, Uzziah, is this it? Is this all you have to give to the world? If you were to die with this being your final mark, your final legacy in this world, would you feel like you had a life well lived? And as I'm examining that within myself, I'm having to look at myself and say, man, Good truly is the enemy of great. I'm working at his job, and this job is good. The pay is good. The perks are good. But I can never get to great focusing on good. I can never get to great focusing on good. I can never build this business called Black Men's Career. I can never give you a video every single day trying to help you get to the next level. I can't do that if I'm sitting behind a cubicle every single day building up somebody else's company. And so I had to do some soul searching within myself to say, Uzziah, you've got a dream in your life. You've got a vision. And this vision is so critical and so important that it's going to force you to sacrifice so many other things on your schedule to pursue this dream. Are you willing to give up your cushy nine to five job to really be able to walk in your greatness? Are you really about that life? You say that you have a dream and you say that you have a goal and you say that you wanna be successful, but now that success is knocking on your front door, are you ready to answer it? Are you ready to walk through the door of opportunity now that it's finally been presented to you? And with that, I had to make some hard decisions. I had to look at myself and say, you know what? It's not going to be possible in the long term for me to get my company to where I want to get while I'm still at this nine to five job. 
And I can fake it and shake it and act like, you know, I'm at the nine to five one minute and I'm doing a little thing here and doing a little thing there for my business in another. But I knew there was no way those two worlds could coexist. I knew that I couldn't serve two masters. I knew that I had to pick one over the other. And so the thing that I want to share with you is the reason why most people live extremely cluttered lives is because it requires balls and courage to actually say no. And sometimes the most important person to say no to is yourself. No, I will not settle for this paycheck on the 1st and 15th, even if it's nice to have. No, I will not settle for this good life that I've made for myself if I know that I'm capable of getting to great. Am I going to have to go through hardships as I'm making that transition? Absolutely. I might have to sacrifice some sleep. I might not be able to always hang out with friends. This could completely turn my life upside down, but I've got a dream that's important to me, and so it's worth it. And so in that very moment, that's when I make the personal decision to explode my clutter. That's what you've got to do. You've got to be willing to explode the clutter that's in your life, okay? That's the first thing. Explode your clutter. I want you to, right now, if you're serious about following your dream, I don't just make BS videos, oh, this is just feel good, and oh, this is just positive talk. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm your success strategist. You come to me if you want your life to be more successful, so here it is. If you're serious about this, you won't be able to get past the first step in this video if you're faking and shaking. If you're one of those people that wants to be able to have your cake and eat it too, oh, I want to be successful, but I want to do all of the things that I'm still doing, I want to keep my exact routine as I've been keeping it, turn this video off. This is not the video for you. If you think that you're going to get to success, oh, I'm going to just hang around the people I've always hung around with <laughs> and expect to get better results, turn this video off. This is not the video for you. If you're going to be successful and walk in your greatness, you have to first identify the clutter in your life and then you have to start cutting that off. Your clutter could be your job. Your clutter could be some of the toxic people that you're keeping in your life. Your clutter could be all of the little distractions that you allow yourself to be consumed by on a day-to-day -day basis. The average person in America today only has an attention span of six seconds. And that's because of the fact that they've allowed themselves to be overcome with distractions by other people that are living their dream. You're so busy watching everybody else fulfill their dream and doing the things that they're supposed to do and you're tuning into that that you've never made time for yourself to follow after your greatness. You need to declutter your life. At every turn, at every level, you must take away all of the time that's consuming your most precious hours on this earth to be able to make room for the most important thing to breathe. 80% of all of your time today is consumed by clutter. And it's not going to be until you get the balls and the courage to start cutting off these clutter areas one by one that you're going to ever notice your life change. It's not going to be until you look at something hard in the face, take stock of everything in your life and say to yourself very honestly, is this moving my life forward? Yes or no. If the answer is no, that's clutter, okay? Same thing when it comes to you doing that spring cleaning. All the clothes that you got in your closet is not clothes that you're ever planning to wear, but you keep the clothes around anyway because in some way you have a certain emotional attachment to the clothes. Oh, my dad bought me this. Oh, my mom bought me this. You can make a million excuses up. The point is you got to do some letting go. You got to do some spring cleaning, okay? Um, 
The first point really goes into the second point that I've already said, the balls and the courage. You've got to be able to have the boldness, okay? Are you bold enough to focus on one primary thing in your life? This is my question to you in today's video. I want you to leave me a comment about that. We still got some parts of the video left to go. Don't think I'm wrapping it up. My question to you today is, do you have the boldness to only focus on one primary thing in your life? When you think about every great leader in society, dead or alive, chances are they focus primarily around one key thing. You think about some of the top athletes that you know, think about Michael Jordan. Is Michael Jordan going to be remembered for baseball or is he going to be remembered for basketball? Right. If you try to spread yourself thin and, oh, well, I want to do this because I'm so talented at this and I want to do that because I'm so creative in that. Listen, let me tell you a little secret. You may not be as creative or as gifted across as many areas as you think that you are. And I don't mean to say that to hate on you. I'm saying that from an economic standpoint. If there's 7.4 billion people on the planet and you feel that you're good at 10 different things, okay, if you're good at those 10 things, right, compared to the 7.4 billion people on the planet, could you be a superstar at every single one of those 10 things? Chances are not. Because in order for you to get to that level, you would have to spend a lifetime really perfecting that craft. You don't even have enough time in one lifetime to be masterful at 10 things. <laughs> and there's too many people on the planet to be world-class around 10 different things. But what most people like to do is they like to say, oh, well, you know, today I want to be a chef. Tomorrow I want to be an artist. Thursday I want to be a musician. What are you going to be? What is your life going to amount to if somebody was to put something on your tombstone that made a mark on what your legacy was in this world, what would it be that they would write? And oftentimes the people that stretch themselves across so many areas, people walk away not knowing what to put on their tombstone because they were not that noteworthy or significant at any one Thing. I just got done reading this book called Made in America by Sam Walton, one of the most inspirational books that I've ever read in the field of business. And as I'm reading this book, I'm just saying to myself, man, you know what? This guy, Sam Walton, he wasn't successful just because of how smart he was and how he was at the right place at the right time in the right race to be able to make Walmart a, 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 a great company. Sam Walton was able to get so much success because he was willing to take the same concept and bring it to its highest levels over 50 consecutive years. This was a man that worked 50 consecutive years focused on the same vision, the same dream. And you know what the problem is in 2018 for you? It's hard to get you focused on any one dream you got for five minutes, much less 50 years. So you got to study the habits of success. Look at successful people. Mozart started training in the piano at five years old. Beethoven, five years old. Michael Jackson started dancing, five years old, right? You look at LeBron, these are guys that have been training since birth at doing the things that they do. So my question to you is this. When are you going to have that courage to say, I am bold enough to focus around one primary area that will do the speaking on the quality of my life, on my level of contribution and impact to the world? You know one reason why emotionally people like to have their hand in so many things? Because they don't believe in themselves enough to feel that one thing will really work. So they diversify their time in all of these multitudes of things because they don't really believe they can accomplish any one thing so well.
If you really believe in yourself at such a high level, put them to, to the challenge. Put it to the test. Go for one key area of your life, clear everything else out, and then let's see what happens in 10 years time, 20 years time. Do you have the boldness to focus on one primary thing or are you going to be that jack of all trades? Last but not least, the third thing that is the primary reason, right? Because really all of these three are primary reasons. <laughs> they allow people will not be successful. Most people will not be successful because they allow themselves to be too easily distracted and they don't build a bubble around their focus area, okay? So if we're taking this down in sequence, most people will never be successful because they don't remove their clutter and all their clutter suffocates their gift. Your gift requires 10,000 hours of deliberate practice and the 10,000 hours of your time. But you can never get to a thousand hours of putting in your time because you're letting your clutter run the show. You don't naturally live a life that is uncluttered. You have to have the boldness to start decluttering some good things. Okay. Now, as you have that boldness to start decluttering and focus on one primary thing, most people become distracted way too damn easy in this modern world. And they don't create for themselves a bubble. I'm going to give you an example of exactly what I mean. My phone does not go off when people call me. I have my phone throughout the workday kept on silent. If there's someone that's on a list of people that I've already acknowledged as extremely important within my network, the, whose call I need to answer, their call will go off. But if I'm getting calls from telemarketers, if I'm getting calls from just people I don't know from a hole in the wall, my I'm not going to stop my vision, my focus, my legacy, my dream, all for a text message, a tweet, a Facebook, an Instagram DM, a Snapchat, an email. There's so many of you guys out there today that are trading your contribution to the world for future generations all from a text message that you won't even remember in the next 30 seconds. You're constantly trading it away. So I create an environment where I make it a little bit more difficult for me to be distracted because I'm operating in tunnel vision. I go into a day understanding my goals, understanding the top priorities that I'm supposed to be work, working on and focusing on, and I dedicate myself to those things relentlessly. If somebody is trying to get in contact with me and I don't answer the phone, they can always leave a message. If somebody sends me a text message and it might take an hour or two to get back to them, it will not be the end of the world. You cannot stop your life and what God has called you to do at the wits and the whims of every single person on the earth 24 seven. It's not going to be working in your benefit. If you want to be successful, no successful person on the face of this planet operates their schedule like that. In fact, that's the reason why when you look at most people that are operating extremely world-class in one skill, a lot of times their phones, their numbers are only accessible to probably 10 people or less. They don't give the phone out to just anybody to just throw them off key whenever they want to be thrown off key. No, because they understand that success is all about focus. When somebody interviewed Warren Buffett and Bill Gates privately, each in their own individual sections. They weren't together. And they asked them the same question. What's the number one leading cause of your success? What's the number one factor? Both of them said focus. And they weren't even in the same room. Okay? So what you got to do is you got to build yourself a bubble. You got to build yourself a bubble of the people 
that count that are helping you get to a better place. You can't just take in everybody. You can't just always just, okay, whenever I don't feel like doing something, I'm going to go on Facebook, I'm going to go on Twitter, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. I'm going to keep it 100 with y'all. The primary time where I'm using any of these platforms is for my vision and my dream to go forth. If I wasn't on here actually trying to promote my vision forth, I wouldn't be on here all day. <laughs> I wouldn't be on here just trying to Facebook with folks like that because there's so much to get done in such a little time. I don't know when my last day is going to be on this earth. Tomorrow's promise to nobody. And so I want you to think about these three things as it comes to the subject of why most people will never be successful. Leave me a comment. Let me know. Do you have what it takes to become successful? Are you willing to explode your clutter? Are you willing to be bold enough to focus on one thing? Are you willing to block out all of your little comforting distractions day to day, whether it be phone calls, emails, text message, Facebook, Twitter, all these different just bits of minutia? Are you willing to put yourself in a tight bubble of the things that truly matter in your life so that way you and future generations of your lineage can benefit, all right, for years to come. If you love yourself enough, you'll do it. If you're still scared, you won't. And that's the reason why most people will never be successful. Last but not least, I want you to make sure that you get into this Empire Builder. This is a free gift that I'm giving to you. As a part of this Empire Builder, I'm showing you how to really be able to get a lot of these skills down as second nature. I know you may not naturally be good when it comes to time management. You may not be good when it comes to productivity. And I want to be able to share with you some of the best insights that I've ever received regarding the subject that's so private in nature that I wouldn't even put it out publicly on platforms like this. If you want me to be able to mentor you and show you how to be able to build your own empire from scratch, click the link below. This is all for free. All I need is your email of where I'm going to be sending this empire builder to, right? And once you get that, guess what? Keep working for it, man. The sky is the limit. I love you. I pray that you leave me a comment. Make sure that you subscribe. Be your brother's keeper and share this video. And I'll see you on the next episode of Black Men's Career.